Hello, okay, so this video is going to be for our Rush Medical College Rotation in Emergency Medicine Reading EKGs section, and you should have gotten 10 or 11 EKGs if you download it off the internet and tried to read, and we're going to go over them quickly here as well as go over the principles of reading EKGs again. Now, if you want more detail, there are several other videos online as well that go into each one of the things, each one of the steps and these are the steps that we're going to go over. We're going to look at rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, ST segments, and T waves. So let's get started with EKG number one. Now you should have gone through all of these, at least make an attempt at them. You don't have to get them right, but at least make an attempt at reading them before watching these videos. So for the rate, we have 23 beats on this rhythm strip, this 10 second rhythm strip. And since we're going for a minute, 23 times 6 is 138. So we got a tachycardia. Now let's look at the rhythm. And so to do that, let's actually zoom in down here and take a look. And so we know we got a tachycardia. Do we have a P for every QRS and a QRS for every P? So we're going to look at these rhythm strips here because you get a nice string of them. And I don't really see P waves here, maybe one there. But the rest, you know, so this one we said maybe, so maybe that, so maybe that. So these all represent the same point in time. And so maybe for that one time there was something there, but for the rest I don't really see anything. Additionally, you'll see that they do not, the intervals between these are not the same. Look, this is almost exactly two boxes. Uh, this one's a little bit longer. This one's a little bit shorter. Uh, this one's almost two and a half boxes. So you've got an irregular heart rate, no Ps. I would call this atrial fibrillation uh, with a rapid rate. So we got a tachycardia and we got an AFib with a rapid rate. The next thing we're going to look at is axis. And so we need a Cartesian coordinate system, really, to try to figure out axis. And so this is the heart here, and we know that we have two leads that are at 90 degrees to each other. we got lead 1 and lead F, so we're going to use these as our axis. So this would be negative 1 and negative F up here. So we got a normal axis if it's in this quadrant, which is positive 1 and positive F. Right axis would be this one here, which is positive F and negative 1. Uh, Let's just keep going around the circle. So negative 1 and negative F mean this is this extreme axis. Some will say extreme right if it's over here, extreme left if it's over here. And finally, we got left axis if it's in this area here. So if you have positive 1 and negative F. And that's up to a line of about 30 degrees. And that 30 degree line just happens to be 90 degrees from positive lead Two. And so below that line is also normal axis. So normal axis is a little bit more than a 90 degree quadrant. So again, you have normal here, left, extreme, right. Now let's look at our EKG. We know we're going to look at 1 and F and possibly 2. So let's look first at 1. And 1 here is mostly positive. And F is mostly positive. There is some negative component to it, but if you were to subtract off the negative, you're still positive. So we have mostly positive F, positive 1. That puts us in this quadrant here, positive 1, positive F. We're here. So normal axis. Normal axis. So next we're going to look at intervals. And a quick review for you. There are three intervals we're going to look at mainly. We're going to look at the PR, the QRS, and the QTC. The PR should be between 120 and 200 milliseconds. Remember, each small box is worth 40 milliseconds. Each big box is worth 200. The QRS should be less than 120 milliseconds. Some sticklers will say 100 milliseconds, but then we're almost literally splitting hairs because we're looking at half boxes, and that's too small for me to see. All right, QTC should be less than 500. That's when we 500 milliseconds. That's when we start getting into problems. Really, the definition is different. It's it's for males less than 440 and for females less than 460, but we're going to go with this one here, and I'll show you why in a second. So let's look at each of those. So let's move down here where we can see better. All right, and if we're going to call this a fib, then there really aren't any P waves. And, you know, looking at this now, I'm not really 100% sure because what is that? And maybe that little bump there is a P wave, and maybe that little bump. And this could just be uh, sinus tech with a very fast, with a sinus arrhythmia. Let's just say for the sake that that's a P wave, okay? So we're going to go from there to there. And that is about one big box, okay? Let's try it again here. This is much less than that. 
this is about maybe three small boxes so that would be 120 this would be 200 and then over here let's go from there to there again that's more like 120 let's take a look at that one too again and I think that's about 120 as well so if we're gonna call this a fib then this is not then there's no PR but here you know I'm revising my thought I'm thinking maybe there is a PR I think it's about 120 milliseconds and that is A-OK. -okay. Let's move down here now to some cleaner uh, waveforms and do the QRS next. And the QRS should be less than 120, we said, which is about three small boxes. And so I think that's about two and a half small boxes. So 2.5 is definitely less than that. So we would say that's about 100 milliseconds. So our QRS is A-OK -okay as well. And finally, I'm going to give you a shorthand way to look at the QTC. QTC is actually something that is calculated. That's what the C stands for. It's, it's corrected for the rate, uh, but and that involves uh, square roots. So the computer will actually calculate that for you, but you can actually do this by section method where you draw a line through the two QRSs that are next to each other. Draw a line about halfway through between the two, and if the T wave is on this side, it's okay. And if it's on the other side, it's prolonged. And by prolonged, we mean greater than 500 milliseconds. That's the time, that's the, the length at which you start worrying about going into torsade. And I think we're good here. I think we're on the, the good side of this. So let's come back up here and fill in the rest. Our intervals look pretty good, 120, 100, less than 500. Now let's look at the ST segments. And we're going to look at these not uh, numerically or alphabetically, but we're going to look at them anatomically. So what I mean by that is that uh, we'll look at where the leads actually are looking at the heart. So 1 and AVL are kind of looking at the lateral aspect, and I actually call these high lateral because this one is a little bit higher, and so it's a little superior, so we're going to call these the high lateral leads. Now, we already looked at F and 2, right? These are down here. 3 is also in this area, so these are our inferior leads. They kind of look at the bottom of the heart. And ADR is looking over here at the right side of the heart. Now let's look at our precordial leads. And they sort of go across the front of the heart like that. So these we could call the anterior or anterior septal or anterior septal. And these are the lateral leads. And then, so we got our high lateral leads, our inferior leads, septal, anterior, and lateral leads. Now let's look at the EKG. So we have our high lateral leads here, which are 1 and AVL. And I'm going to actually put uh, these as our lateral leads here as well. So these are the ones that we're going to look at together every time. We're going to look at our lateral leads together. We're going to look at 1, then L, then 5, then 6, or 4, 5, 6. Next, let's look at the inferior leads, and that are these down here. These are our inferior leads. It's, it's going to be 2, 3, and F, and so you're going to look for S3 elevations in those. Then we can look at our septal leads, which will be these. These will be our septal ones. And uh, finally, we can look at our uh, anterior leads. I'm just going to darken those colors a little bit so it's easier to see. So now, let's first look at our lateral leads. Do we see any ST elevations or T wave inversions? ST segments here look fine. Here they look pretty good. Maybe, I don't know if that's the T wave here, maybe there's a little T wave and one T wave inversion uh, in there. Then let's look at our lateral leads over here. Do we see anything that would Corroborate that. Well, there is some ST depression, right? So we say, oh, maybe there is some ST depression. Let's go back over here. Oh, yeah, you know what? Um, maybe there's some ST depression there. Then let's look at our inferior leads, okay? And so here we got our ST. Uh, this baseline's kind of wavy. So no, definitely no ST elevations in, in our inferior leads as well. Then let's look septal. T waves are up, ST segments look good, and then let's look at our anterior leads again. T waves are up, ST segments look good, T waves are up, ST segments look good. So for the most part, they look pretty good. We can say that anteriorly, maybe some nonspecific stuff going on there. Inferior looks fine. Septal and anterior also look fine. So we checked our ST segments and our T waves. And so then our diagnosis and plan for this EKG would be 
that this is uh, atrial fibrillation with a rapid rate. So we have a, a rapid rate coming from somewhere in the atria. If we're going to call it sinus, it's coming from the sinus node. If we're going to call it atrial fibrillation, then it's coming from all over here. Now, if we want to slow down the rate, the best place to slow it down is over here at the AV node. And so the various drugs that will slow you down at the AV node spell AVCD. And so you've got adenosine, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and digoxin. So pick whichever one you like. Maybe calcium channel blockers like diltiazem. You give 20, 25 milligrams of diltiazem. Hopefully you slow this person down. And that's it for looking at this first EKG. The subsequent EKGs are going to go a lot faster because now you know the process we're going to use. All right, thanks.